Hi guys, it's Nicole here from The Little Craft House. Today we are going to be talking about silk screening on your polymer clay. So silk screens are an amazing way to add colour and detail to your items, especially if you don't have a lot of drawing skills like myself. So silk screening is super easy and it is becoming so much more popular recently. So I thought I would give you some tips and tricks and we're going to cover everything from start to finish, including the paints to use and what sealants to use. So stay with me and I hope you learn something new. So I thought I'd start just by telling you a little bit about the different types of silk screens. Now, these are the three brands that we currently stock in our shop at the moment. We have the Hanny Handmade. We also have Moiko and we have the Sculpey range. So silk screens are made out of a fabric mesh type material. So they're quite flexible and very soft. So the image has been, where you see the yellow, that is where the image has been removed and that is a very fine mesh. So when you apply this onto your polymer clay and then apply the paint, you're left with that image on your polymer clay. So I'll demonstrate how to use them very soon, but just wanted to show you the different types. Now there are many other brands out there as well. As I say, these are just the three we stock in our store. You can also get them directly from these makers. When it comes to which paints to use, I just use the Montmartre paint because this is what we sell in the store and this is what I've got on hand at home. But really, you can use any acrylic paint as long as it has a thicker consistency. So I wouldn't be using anything like watercolour or even ink because what will happen is it will seep underneath your screen, leaving smudges, and you won't get a clear image. But anything that's thicker... We generally say toothpaste consistency, but it doesn't have to be quite as thick as that, but that tends to work well for me. When applying a silk screen, it's really important to make sure that you have it the right way up. So shiny side should be down. It's only a little bit shinier, so it can be a little bit hard to tell sometimes. However, a lot of makers will imprint their name on the design or a number, so make sure that that's readable and not back to front. We're going to place our silk screen down onto our clay, which has been pre-rolled nice and smooth. I'm just going to smooth the silk screen onto the clay to make sure that it has no bubbles or no gaps in it. Now before I apply the black paint, I will just mention that once the paint has been applied, we need to wash it off as quick as possible. Now what happens is, is if the paint dries on your silk screen, it will fill those gaps in the mesh and your silk screen will become unusable. So once I have revealed this, I'm going to run it down the hallway to my bathroom and wash it off. Now I like to use a old business card or old credit cards for scraping the paint. Now, the process is very similar to um, screen printing. Right, so I've got my titanium white. And I'm just going to apply a small amount along the top. It's better to apply a small amount and then go back over with more afterwards if you haven't applied enough. So just going to do a small row of that along the top. Like so. And taking my card. Pull the paint down over the silk screen. Okay, and it looks like it's even enough. And now for the reveal. So once I've pulled this off, I am going to take it straight down to my bathroom to wash it off. Now I don't have a stand set up here in my bathroom, so I thought I would just show you now that I've washed it. So what I do is I run the water and I start from the middle and I just slowly smooth and wash off from the centre going outwards to around the edge. Now, as you can see, I'm left with a slight little bit of paint around the edge there because I didn't wash that off in time. Now, I prefer to have any of those 
bits of paint left around the edges where it's not going to ruin the actual design. So yes, I start from the center and I work my way outwards. Now to dry my silk screen, I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel and sit it on that and just let it air dry. Don't stick it to the side of your sink or flat on a bench top because it can actually affect the design. So once my design is complete, I like to leave it for about 20 minutes to half an hour before I cut out my designs. Now, I mentioned previously about the paint and that it may not necessarily dry. Now, what does happen is some paints enter into a bit of a chemical reaction with the polymer clay and the paint doesn't actually dry. But what happens is it does go a bit tacky, a little bit sticky. So that at that point is where I use my shape cutters and cut my shapes out. Now, once you've baked them, Again, they still may remain sticky. So if they do remain sticky, it's not an issue because then we just use a sealer such as a Sculpey gloss um, or glaze or even resin to cover them. And then you'll find that they are no longer sticky. So these next few clips, I just wanted to quickly show you. I recorded them for Instagram, but I thought I'd show on here too, just to show that you can use multiple colors of paint on your silk screen. It actually ends up giving quite a really nice rainbow looking effect. This one here, I'm just using multiple colors of clay in the background with a singular color of paint over the top. And finally with this one, I made the background using some alcohol inks, which I then sponged to make the background colour, and then silk screened over the top of that. If you are interested in learning more about polymer clay and alcohol ink, I recorded a tutorial a little while back all about that. And so just make sure that your alcohol ink has dried properly before you go and apply that silk screen, just so that you don't transfer any of the ink onto it. So I'm quite often asked what to do with the scraps once you cut your designs out of the polymer clay. Well, there's a few different things you can do. Now, as I've just mentioned, sometimes your paint stays a little bit sticky and wet, which works really well for then removing the clay, rather removing it from the clay. So I'm just taking a baby wipe here and just wiping down the clay to remove that paint. Now again, this little clip here is from Instagram where I'm showing how you can use some of those clay scraps with the paint on it. This is just making a bit of a scrappy cane using some foil as well. And what I really love about doing this style of scrappy canes is that you just don't know what you're gonna end up with. And sometimes the final design, I actually like just as much as my original designs. So I am a massive advocate for no waste with our polymer clay. I don't like to have any scrap of clay go to waste. So again, this is just another little clip on scrunching the scraps together to make a, another little cane. Um, and then with these pieces that I then make, I either make earrings as is, or if I'm not happy, I'll just use it as a base for another slab later. So the final step in the silk screening process that I wanted to share with you guys today is about the sealing of your silk screens. So this can be done for a number of reasons. Um, for me, I suppose the number one reason would be to just protect that beautiful image that you've just popped onto your clay. Um, it can also be to help set your paint as well. So as I mentioned earlier, if your paint hasn't set completely, by putting that seal on it is going to help stop that stickiness and it's not going to matter that that paint is still at that tacky stage. Another reason is also that polymer clay is not a porous material. Being a plastic base, it can sometimes be a bit shiny and your paint has got nothing to grip onto. So over time, the paint may scratch off and sealing just gives it that little bit extra protection anyway, just, just for what daily wear and tear on the earrings. And I guess the final reason that you'd actually want to seal your pieces is just to make them pretty. So this one here has been done with resin. So that is 
absolutely beautiful. Just the shine on that just takes it, I reckon, takes it next level once you're using resin. But in saying that, resin is a whole nother ball game. So if you are thinking of going into resining, it is a chemical, so it's not for everyone. And just make sure that you do your research before diving down that rabbit hole. There are plenty of other varnishes and sealants out there, though, that you can use. Um, so these ones here were resined, the super shiny ones. But I've also used on this one here that has got um, the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. That's this one used on it. Um, and also I use um, Sculpey Gloss Glaze that gives a nice shine. That's, these ones have got that used on it. You can see the shine on that. There we go. So it's a shine without being super shiny and domed like the resin. And my most favourite recently is this one, the FIMO semi-gloss varnish. I find that gives more of a matte finish rather than um, that shine like the gloss one there. Now I'm pretty sure that I've covered everything I can here today about using silk screens. So if I have missed anything out along the way, I'll pop some additional notes down in the description of this tutorial. I'd also like to invite you guys to head over and follow me on Instagram or Facebook as I am constantly adding new little video tutorials over there too. That's also where I let you know about new and different products that we've got coming into our shop, such as silk screens. So thank you all for joining me today and I hope that I've answered some of your questions about using silk screens. So they are lots of fun and I hope you try them out too if you haven't already. So thanks again and I shall see you next time. Bye.